history is vital in understanding the character of the state. So don't play with history. The renowned scholar and author of the book, The End of History, I'm talking about Francis Fukuyama. He's also the author of the book, The Origin of Political Power. I always recommend that book to anyone interested in history and power. He says in the end of history that the understanding of the functioning of institutions is connected to the knowledge of their origins and the forces that created them. This notion is critical in the resolution of the Nigerian question. Do we follow history? How often do we analyze history in order to bet a kind of future that is for sustainable development? Some have made the point that Nigeria's foundation was laid on the premise of suspicion, mistrust between the North and the South, and it always plays out. In the PDP, it played out in the last election. Some Southern political leaders disagreed with Atiku Abubakar becoming the presidential candidate of the party. Their argument was that Buhari a Fulani man having done eight years, it would not be fair for another Fulani man in the person of Atiku Abubakar to govern the country. So, the North-South divide played, it played itself out in that argument. If you've also followed history, some make the point that by preserving Northern Nigeria, as an area of cultural autonomy with its own strong institutions, Britain contributed to the forces that culminated in the Nigerian Civil War. When they talk about preservation of the North, there is one question that comes to mind. You know, somewhat, the South was divided into two, the western region and the eastern region. But the north was left intact. So you had one big north who came to parliament to dominate the divided south. And once the south was divided, you created the Igbo and the Yoruba. And you created one behemoth, North. So in every discussion in Parliament, the North would dominate. Ordinarily, either Azikiwe or Namdi, Azikiwe or Abafemi Awolo, would have been in the best position to govern, considering their contribution to the independent movement. But the South was split into West and east. To even add insult to injury, the Midwest was created from the West, thus dividing the South further and leaving one North. It was until the military struck in 1966 that the North was redefined. So having looked at that point, some would say that that kind of structure gave birth to some of the problems that we are encountering today. In the book, Nigeria, A New History of a Turbulent Century, written by Richard Byrne, he gave historical examples that align with the point I have raised and if you look closely, you will find that book here. Richard Bourne, there's the book. Yes, you'll find it there. 
I am raising questions about the Nigerian question. Another argument is that the British had no choice but to maintain the North's decisive numerical advantage as it was the sole defense against political and economic domination by the South. Did you get that argument? The British felt that the North was already disadvantaged. Disadvantaged in terms of natural resources and human resources. The South was already more educated. The South had oil. Awolowo was already generating millions from cocoa. So if you give power to the South, that will be total dominance of the North. So the British wanted to create a balance. And they said, let's have a big knot. If you have read Fred Onyoziri, he's a political scientist. He makes the point that one consequence of this British protection of the North is that the whole nation never benefited from a fuller social integration of the major sections of the country. I don't know if you've seen this book. Can anything good come out of history? Written by that renowned late Nigerian historian, Obaro Ikime. You will find that book on udarabooks.com. But it is not to that book that I refer to here. To Obaro Ikime, in one of his articles, he says the 1939 British action that conferred on the North a favored status that was reflected in the independent constitution made the East and the West to become fierce competitors in national politics, a situation that the North exploited to a great advantage in the politics of decolonization. You know, one of the crises in the Western region was the plot by the North to exploit the rift between Ladoke Akintola and the Bafemi Awolowo, Amadu Belo and Tafawa Baliwa were bent on ensuring that Awolowo was schemed out of power in the Western region. The consequences was Operation Wet Year, when thousands were killed, many were burnt alive in Yoruba land. The largest consequence was the first military coup on the 15th of January, 1966. And after that coup, there was a counter coup in July, 1966. The fallout of the coups was the Nigerian Civil War. So the Civil War was a product of the politics of the elites of the First Republic. Are you with me? As we discuss this country, don't underrate the power of history.